This video is brought to you by Squarespace. One of the most difficult things about learning a foreign language is finding the right resources that will be useful and that will help you achieve your language goals faster. You guys might be feeling like the resources you're currently using are boring and don't really help you improve your skills. That's why I decided to make this video. Today, I'll be sharing with you my favorite resources to learn English everything I used and everything that helped me to go from A1 beginner to C2 near native level. Let's begin with language learning apps. To be honest, I never used a lot of language learning apps. I feel like in the past I kind of dabbled in Quizlet a little bit, but recently I realized that I like Anki a lot more. Both of these apps are great for memorizing vocabulary, but to me Quizlet has more gamification qualities to it. Sometimes it feels like a game, and I feel like in one of my previous videos where I was reviewing a lot of language learning apps, I said that Personally, I don't really like apps that have this like game aspect to it, you know, that feel like a game. But I know that there are a lot of people out there who love this kind of style of apps. If you're one of those people though, you will enjoy Quizlet a lot. To me, the other major difference is that Anki uses space repetition technology and I always talk about it because honestly, space repetition technology helps me so much when it comes to memorizing new things, vocabulary, grammar patterns, things like that. I love space repetition technology and that's why I prefer Anki over Quizlet. When it comes to all the other language learning apps, they were definitely not a part of my learning when it came to English. English. Again, I started learning English when I was a kid. I was like six years old. I did not like English back then. My English was not amazing when I was six. Only when I became a teenager, I started getting more and more interested in English and I started, you know, using more and more resources to see which ones I actually like using. And I really wanted to make everything super convenient because I was a high school student, you know, I was preparing for my state exams to go to college and stuff like that. So I didn't want to use a lot of apps. So I use Quizlet and I use Anki. And right now when it comes to English, even though I'm not actually like actively learning English, I still use Anki to memorize new vocabulary in English. For example, I heard a new phrasal verb or maybe I was reading a book and there was a cool phrase, a cool expression and I was like, I want to learn it. For example, a few days ago I was reading a book and there was a very cool expression, a newly minted doctor. And I was like, whoa, like I understand what this expression means, but I'm not sure that I can use it myself. You know, it's definitely not a part of my active vocabulary. So that's why Anki for me is a great tool to help me put some words in my passive vocabulary to my active vocabulary. So that's why I always talk about Anki. I recommend Anki to everyone. Now let's talk about writing practice tools. I have done so much journaling in English over the years. It is pretty crazy. I think I first got interested in journaling, especially in English, when I was a freshman in college. I was like, whoa, journaling can really help me, you know, with my anxiety, help my mental health. So I just decided to give it a try. But then I decided to try journaling in English and this way it helped me improve my writing skills so, so much. And as a bonus, it helped me increase my vocabulary because when I was journaling, I started to realize that, oh, okay, I don't know how to say this specific word or I'm not sure about like this grammar rule. So let me research this topic and learn it. I also remember writing a lot because I was preparing for my TOEFL exam, for my IELTS exam. So I had a lot of exams and obviously this kind of like academic writing is very different from from the writing I did when I was journaling. But I think the academic aspect of it helped me learn more academic words, I don't know, maybe phrasal verbs and stuff like that, and really help me understand the structure of those exams. Right now, all I do when it comes to writing in English is journaling. I just open my journal and I write about my life. 
you know, okay, today I did that, I felt like this, tomorrow, these are my plans. That's pretty much what I do right now. A great way to write in a foreign language even more is to start your blog online. Fortunately, right now you can do that very easily on Squarespace. Squarespace's powerful blogging tools can help you share your stories, photos, videos, and updates. I personally love using this tool to blog in foreign languages and make my content stand out online. Guys, my own website, ronicamark.com, is built on Squarespace. And honestly, I created this website myself Self in just a few hours. On Squarespace, you can choose from a variety of professional templates tailored to different purposes. You can customize the look, update content, and add features to suit your needs. As you can see, with just a few clicks, you can completely transform your website. Squarespace's Fluid Engine makes it simple for everyone to unleash their creativity. Just start with a top-notch template and easily customize every design detail using intuitive drag-and-drop technology for both desktop and mobile. As you you can see you can add pictures, videos, change fonts, and customize your website however you want. If you want to create your own website too, head to squarespace.com veronica to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by using my code veronica. Now let's move on to all the resources I used for listening and speaking. So the biggest listening resource for me was always YouTube. I remember when I was 14 years old, I discovered YouTube and that I could watch videos on YouTube in different languages because to be honest, I don't know why, but before that I thought that I lived in Russia so I could only watch videos in Russian. And then I realized that it was not actually the case and I could watch so many different videos in so many different languages and I became obsessed. I really liked using YouTube for improving my speaking skills because I can find a video on any topic. I remember there was a time when I was only interested in vlogs. So I just started following a bunch of people who made vlogs on YouTube and I watched every single one of their videos. I learned so many amazing words. I still remember that day when I learned the word loofah in English and I was like, that's a loofah, like I literally have it in my bathroom and I never knew how to say it in English. And because of YouTube, I learned so many useful words. And after watching all of those videos, every single time I would go into my bathroom, into my bedroom, I would be like, oh, I know how to say this word in English now. For speaking, I used italki, and also I had my own English teacher who I could practice speaking with. However, I have to make a note here and say that we did not speak that much, to be honest, like during my English classes. The place that helped me improve my speaking skills a lot was the speaking club that I joined. Honestly, when I discovered speaking clubs for myself, like offline and online, my life changed because I realized that I could finally speak to people and improve my speaking skills that way. Before that, when I was at school, even at university, I didn't speak that much. I think I had the exact same problem that a lot of you guys might be experiencing right now if you're in college, for example, that you just don't get a lot of speaking practice. You do a lot of grammar drills, you learn new vocabulary, but when it comes to speaking, nothing. And that's why you feel scared, that's why you feel self conscious and that's why it's your responsibility right now to create this environment for yourself. Of course, at the beginning, it felt scary because I realized that I, you know, I knew so many words in English, but I couldn't combine all of them together and create sentences. I still remember when I became like pretty confident, I was like, ooh, I kind of want to join a French speaking club now. Because I remember when I was in college, when I was in high school, I was kind of dabbling in French a little bit, but then in college I stopped practicing because I started learning Chinese and all of my attention, all of my energy went to that. But I remember joining my very first 
French speaking club and it was great because it was a speaking club for beginners and there are actually a lot of speaking clubs especially online that are great for your specific level like don't feel scared that once you're gonna join a speaking club everyone is gonna be super advanced there absolutely not there are speaking clubs for intermediate students and even for beginners another thing that helped me boost my confidence is working on my pronunciation and working on my accent. I'm from Russia and right now when I meet Americans, for example, and I talk to them, they could never tell that I am from Russia because I don't have this traditional Russian accent when I speak English. They can tell that I'm not a native speaker, absolutely yes, but it's always so interesting talking to native speakers and them being like, oh, where are you from? Like, I can't pinpoint you because you do sound like you're not a native speaker, but you don't have like a very specific accent to a very specific region. So where are you from? It's always so fun. Like I love playing this guessing game with native speakers. But what helped me improve my accent, my pronunciation in English is uh, subscribing to YouTube channels that talk about accent training. Again, I just went to YouTube and I started watching a bunch of videos on this topic, the American accent, because I wanted to improve my English and I want it to sound more American. I can also recommend one book that I liked a lot and I used it and it was great. It's called Mastering the American Accent. I'm going to leave the link to this book down in the description if you want to check it out. But I enjoyed using it so, so much. I have to say though, you have to be very responsible when you're using a book that is teaching you, you know, a new accent because obviously you have to listen to all the audio recordings. You can't just like read the rules and be like, yeah, I understand like I know how to do it and that's why I feel like right now I like YouTube a little bit more because there are a lot of youtubers out there a lot of amazing teachers who are gonna show you you know how to position your tongue what to do with your teeth like with your mouth with your lips and stuff like that so this way you can actually see everything and repeat after them another amazing resource that helped me a lot when I didn't know how to pronounce a specific word is using Forvo. Forvo is a great pronunciation dictionary. You can use it for a lot of different languages, not just English. You just type in the word, let's say Lufa, and then you see how native speakers pronounce this word. And you can repeat after them. If you're interested in the American accent, you can just listen to those audio recordings. Now let's move on to reading materials. I feel like at one point when I was not a beginner anymore, but I was not quite at this intermediate stage, I decided to try reading books, just books in English. And you know what happened? I couldn't. They were way too hard for me. And I felt discouraged. I felt demotivated. I felt like, oh my God, it's so hard. Like, should I even read if it's that hard? But then I was like, okay, hold on, hold on, Veronica, just research this topic a little bit more. And I found out that I could start using graded readers and I absolutely loved the experience. Again, just open Google and type in graded readers and then in your language. For example, graded readers in English, graded readers in French, if you're learning French. And you're gonna find so many amazing books that are specific to your current level. The problem with reading books for native speakers, for example, in English, is that of course there are gonna be a lot of words you're not gonna understand. And when it comes to input, this input is not gonna be comprehensible enough for you. So that's why I, on this channel, I started talking a lot about comprehensible input, meaning the input you can understand, the information you can understand. If you feel like you're reading a book and it's like, 10 times more difficult than your current level is, then you have to scale down and choose a different book. Believe me, if you keep on learning this language, one day you'll be able to read the book that seems extremely hard for you right now. After graded readers, I transitioned to reading books for young adults because I felt like I loved them more than books for children because I was not a child anymore. I was in college and I was like, 
I don't actually want to read books for kids and I feel like that's a problem that a lot of adults experience. A lot of people say that, you know, just read books for kids and I actually say it sometimes too. But the problem is, what if you don't like books for kids? Like, what do you do then? So I tried reading books for young adults and I enjoyed them so, so much. I still remember my very first series of books that I read in English and that included like a lot of books. It was not just like one book or two books or three books. I think maybe like five or six books, like a whole series. I loved it so much. Was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I absolutely love that book series. Oh my God, it was so interesting. I could not get enough of that story, which proves the point that if you love the story, you are gonna love reading it in English or any other foreign language you're learning. Now let's talk about grammar and all the grammar books and resources I used. To be honest, here I can only recommend one book because that's the approach I'm using right now with Spanish just stick to one grammar book. There are so many grammar resources out there. If you love a website, just stick to this one website for now. You know, at least when you're just starting out, it's always better to just have one trusted resource. So for me, that book was English Grammar News by Raymond Murphy. I know a lot of you guys might be familiar with this book. I personally loved using it. I loved all the exercises. If you're watching this video and you feel like, oh my God, I have tried using this book or my teacher gave me this book and I absolutely hated it, it is absolutely okay. It just means that you need to look more and find the resource, the grammar book or the website that you personally love using. Again, all the links to all the resources I'm mentioning in this video will be down in my description so you can check them out later. And now let's talk about this very important aspect of learning a new language, which is community and support. I think for me, when it came to support, I had amazing tutors, amazing teachers who were helping me along the way. However, sometimes there were moments when I felt like I needed more. I needed more information or maybe more exercises or maybe I couldn't quite understand a specific grammar rule and that's why I always took responsibility over it and I started searching and looking and trying to improve because at the end of the day I had the goal of learning English. Not my teacher, you know, not my college professor. It was my goal. It was my goal to improve my accent. It was my goal to start communicating with native speakers. No one created this goal for me. I created it for myself. So it was my responsibility to start doing something to actually achieve that goal. Sometimes it's hard to keep going when there are no good examples in front of you. So what I did in those moments was I started following people online, on YouTube, on Instagram. I started following people who learned English to a very good level or people who were just starting out their journey and were sharing their journey with the world. Because this way I felt like I was not alone and that I had all of those examples in front of me. So if someone could do it, and I wanted to do the exact same thing, I could do it too. They were sharing all the tips, the advice, the journey, how they did that. So all of that information was helping me achieve my goal. And their example was motivating me because I was looking up to those people and I was just thinking, wow, like you're a great example for me. You're a great motivator. And thank you so much for making all of this content. Maybe it's actually something that motivated me to start my own YouTube channels now, plural, because I have two right now, because I wanted to share my journey online with the world too. And maybe some of you guys, I'm sure some of you guys are using all of my tips, all the advice, and all of this information is helping you too. So I think it's gonna be it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to create your own website, don't forget to go to squarespace.com Veronica. The link will be down in the description and in my pinned comment. If you're curious what micro habits help me learn English and achieve the level I have right now, check out this video next and share your favorite English learning resources in the comments. I'll see you there.